Well, hey everyone, I put my glasses on today because I actually wanted to talk a little bit about a serious topic that I've actually been really thinking about for the last few days from actually a subscriber of mine, uh, and I've really kind of contemplated what the direction of this channel is and some of these videos that some of the community has been putting out and some of us has really either done really, really well at or has kind of, you know, been an autopilot. And I feel like I've a little bit been an autopilot lately. So let me break down what this video is going to talk about. So I'll actually today want to talk about why I make videos. And I kind of want to dissect this in a very exploratory way. So I really want to get all of you involved as my subscribers. I have just crossed 800 subscribers, which is fantastic. And I honestly, two years ago when I started this channel, did not at all believe that this would be, you know, uh, a, a realization of mine. I honestly thought a couple few 50 maybe 60 friends would really watch this channel and so I'm really thankful for everybody in fact at the end of the video I would like to shout out a lot of different people and I want to say a lot of different uh, really good, nice things but uh, today's topic I wanted to talk about one thing that one of my subscribers specifically talked about that I think is really interesting and I think is a really uh, interesting discussion too because I actually want to hear your comments down below that's where I'm getting a lot of this feedback that uh, I feel is very valid and I feel like is a very good criticism as well. So let me read um, from this comment here. It's public so you can see this as well. Uh, my subscriber at Young Sun Kim, uh, I want to say thank you so much for uh, saying this and honestly it's a really really great thing to say. So I wanted to just read his comment. Uh, I'll read a little bit about my response. So here we go. This is on the topic of kind of these haul videos, these hunting videos, a lot of people get things that they haven't seen before. And it's really a topic that I have not really thought about too much uh, myself because I just, I consume, I consume, I consume. It's because I have this expendable income, right? So let me read um, what he said and then what I will respond with. So, are all of your unboxings blind buys? Sorry, I'm kind of new to these types of videos, but as a cinephile and screenwriter, I'm just not understanding buying something without seeing it first and knowing that it is actually a piece of work that appeals to you. Is it just collecting for the sake of collecting and showing off that you bought it? I love Criterion, but I only buy Blu-rays of movies I love and that I know I'll return to and study. So I want to it as a part of my physical collection, but I don't understand just buying stuff just to buy it, never having seen it. Can you explain this to me? Seems like a lot of people do it, but I get nothing from their videos because they can never express why they like the film and how they personally connect to it. Seems like that would be the best use for these videos. I love this comment slash criticism of this community, uh, of myself, and honestly, it made me really think about, am I doing this in autopilot? Am I just buying things to show off to you? I feel like the last um, few videos uh, over the summer I've been just doing haul videos mostly uh, mainly because all my friends are doing other things and I'd like to be doing the unboxing Bergman with Chris and I'd like to be doing more Criterion collection videos where I'm just talking about the different types of uh, things in my collection I also want to just do more discussion videos but a lot of alas a lot of my friends are very busy and so I've been kind of cornered into this thing where I don't exactly know the direction of everything where everything is going because everything was going so smoothly at the end of 2018 for me that I really uh, kind of just got lost into that and uh, without really any contingency plans so uh, my response initially uh, was to me the reason I collect film are for a multitude of approaches and I honestly I will read this and I also will uh, elaborate a little bit more here as well the first being that I have seen a film and I really enjoy it so I'll buy it right I'll put it in my collection so I gave some examples like Lord of the Rings or the Princess Bride I actually have a few things here um, in front of me uh, are the examples of things that I've seen in the past that I have bought because I love it so much so the first thing that I will pull out is something from my childhood a little bit more uh, Secondhand Lions. This is a film that uh, I think really established my love of film early on and my love of the human condition. I really enjoy this film um, for a multitude of reasons. I just love Haley Joel Osmond in this movie. Uh, Michael Caine and Robert Duvall both uh, play these grumpy old men. I think they're fantastic. So this is a, a, an example of a film that I've seen in the past that I picked up because I know I'm going to rewatch it again, right? Another thing I, uh, will, I will talk to this movie to death, I, I swear. Uh, in Bruges, I've already said a million things about this film, but it is something that I got uh, from a recommendation from a friend. I 
looked into it before I bought it and then I watched it, I've seen it 20 or 30 times because it's my pretty much one of my favorite films of all time. So I, I can explain a lot of different things. The reason why I like in Bruges, uh, the philosophical reasons or religious uh, consequences, um, right or wrong, um, beauty of, you know, of observation, uh, being bored at a place that you feels very foreign to you, dying in a place that feels very foreign to you. There's a lot of different things about this. The acting, uh, the cinematography, it's a little shaky cam at some parts, uh, the black comedy involved. There's so many things uh, about In Bruges that really speak to me as just uh, a viewer and especially uh, my personality and who I am exactly, right? Um, another film that I'll talk about that really speaks to me early on is uh, The Seventh Seal. So this is in the Criterion Collection. This movie in particular, uh, I saw in humanities class back in uh, technical college when I was getting my understudy. So like just my undergrad is getting a lot of little credits out of the way. But The Seventh Seal, I actually have seen um, from a professor who is actually still friends with me now. We get drinks occasionally. In fact, I really love this guy. He's a cynical bastard, but I love him, and he probably will never watch this video because uh, he actually kind of makes fun of me for my YouTube channel, which is, I actually think is really, really okay. Um, but anyway, he kind of introduced me to this this film. Uh, once again, uh, just going into Ambrugge again, it really has a lot of religious undertones and also the fear of not knowing when your time is to come, right? And this is something that I have no idea why, but I'm just fascinated by. In fact, uh, personally, I don't really think, uh, I, I'm agnostic, um, I'll put that out there. I don't really think that um, I'm really scared of death. I mean, I will be once it's happening, but I, I really don't think much about the afterlife. And I really think more about the present moment and how the past experiences make me the person I am today. And I'm thankful, and I'm actually like uh, really excited for the future experiences I have, like going to China and uh, just meeting a lot of different people uh, in the future, but I really don't have that fear of death, but I'm fascinated by it, right? Um, so, The Seventh Seal has really spoke to me and I've seen it ever since. It's one of my first movies I put in the Criterion Collection and I really love it. Um, so, two more, two more recent films that really have spoke to me in the past that I've seen in theaters and then I've rewatched um, since. Uh, Wind River uh, with Jeremy Renner and Elizabeth Olsen. Uh, Taylor Sheridan, I've really, really appreciated uh, his films since he's been working with Denis Villeneuve, and I just, I really love his work. I love how it's, he's kind of got a, a stick to him where he is kind of building up uh, this very human story, and then it just punches you in the stomach uh, out of nowhere, and uh, this one in particular is a really great debut film for him because he directed it and writ wrote it himself and there's some really great performances in it and uh, it's a really tragic and sad story and it actually has a good message as well, you know. And then lately, uh, one of my favorite foreign films of last year, I only seen it, uh, I've only seen it twice now. I've, I've seen it in theaters at my local independent cinema theater and I also saw it uh, here in my own house. Um, but I really loved <laughs> Uh, the, the title is very apt, uh, and that is Burning. Um, this is just such a Lee Chang Dong, who is a, a Korean filmmaker, and uh, is just a fantastic film about the abuse of power, uh, what uh, people can do to lord that power over other people. There's a lot of um, tension about relationships and what it means um, to fall in love with somebody or be obsessed with somebody uh, and things not working out, too. Um, and it speaks to me as well um, in certain past relationships I've had in my life and I don't really want to divulge into that because that's not really what this is about. So those are just some films that um, I would elaborate my first point, right? I know I'm going on for a second. So the first being the films that I've seen that I picked up and I really enjoy and I put it in my collection, right? The second is the mo uh, for the exploration of a media that I find fascinating. Some of my favorite films I have never seen before have been from Blind Buys. And I actually have a list here as well, but I, I mentioned the Before Trilogy, which is right behind me. I actually have the posters up there. I've seen those multiple, multiple times. I love those films. Um, Fritz Lang's M. I really, really, really love that film uh, and the, uh, the idea of a lot of just that, that tribal fervor that you have about this one heinous act that happens to uh, a kid and what the community does to surround yourself um, and just trying to identify this person who did this thing. And then Harakiri, which is a really great Japanese film. In fact, 
I want to shout out SJS Films, who's been like pushing me to watch this film for a long, long time. And I finally watched it, and I love it. Uh, one of my favorite samurai films of all time. It's such a great uh, kind of just re recollection of uh, events that have happened in the past, and then things not kind of turning out the way they were supposed to. And uh, just another abuse of power, um, people relying on a system without really know, knowing <clears throat> the, the consequences of their action and actually what they're going to do. And I really love that. And it's got some of the greatest action scenes I've seen, uh, period, uh, just in a film in general. So those are some examples here. I have more examples here that I actually want to show you. Um, so let me get those real quick. Let me be a little bit more brief on some of the films that I have blind bought and have just loved and I've seen multiple times. So the first one I just have on a pile of lists is The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. It may in fact be my favorite Western. I've liked Jimmy Stewart for a while because I've seen a lot of Hitchcock films with him in it. And uh, I've never really been particularly the giant John Wayne fan that uh, a lot of people I know have. But I really like John Wayne in this film and I really like Jimmy Stewart because Jimmy Stewart's kind of the titular, titular main character of the story and uh, John Wayne is kind of playing that uh, nice secondary character who's really there to support Jimmy Stewart in his cowardice kind of ways and kind of illuminate uh, the person that, the potential he can be. Uh, and uh, it's a really great film, really great villain as well. Uh, this is a, yeah, a film that I've revisited a couple times that I have bought, just blind bought from the, from the start. Another one is uh, Late Quartet. Uh, this is a film that I picked up when I used to work at the record store. Uh, it was used and I picked it up. I'm like, yeah, it looks interesting. It's got Philip Seymour Hoffman in it, Christoph Waltz, um, Ka Catherine Keener. I I've seen both of the multiple uh, films from these people and I'm like, I have no, I don't know what to expect. I got it for like two bucks. And so, and then I watched it and it was just this really great, compelling story of a quartet. Um, and late in their life, who, who passed their prime. Uh, there's a lot of relationship uh, dynamics involved in this story, a lot of great music, um, a lot of very human acts. Um, and I just, I don't know, it really spoke to me and it still speaks to me now. I've seen it multiple times and I've recommended it multiple times to people. I don't know how many people have actually watched the film, but uh, that's another film that I blind bought and uh, really enjoyed. Another one is a classic. I'll just go with a classic film that uh, I had never seen until you know, the last couple of years, Cool Hand Luke uh, with Paul Newman. What a, a legendary performance. I understand why this is such a, an amazingly praised film. I think from 1967, I want to say, um, I'm blanking on the time. Yeah, 1967, yeah. So uh, what a great chain gang kind of story of somebody who was in the wrong place at the wrong time, did the wrong thing, and uh, not really, but uh, <laughs> anyway, got in trouble for it, and ultimately uh, is a human story uh, that I feel like kind of paved the way for like Shawshank Redemption and stuff like that. And so that's really, really cool. I'm going to put some of these down because it's going to get hard to balance these things. Another thing I want to talk about is the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. Um, I'm in love with the score. I actually just recently picked up the vinyl uh, LP. Uh, it's Warren Ellis and Nick Cave. Uh, those are some really legendary kind of per, uh, performers and artists. Um, but I really love... <laughs> this story as well. Casey Affleck and Brad Pitt um, do a really, really great job of portraying the last days, even if it was Hollywoodized, of Jesse James and uh, the the crew he was a, a, around himself with. Um, and I don't know, it just it's such a great film. And this is like eclipsed generally by No Country for Old Men or There Will Be Blood because uh, it came out in the same year. And it's just it's legendary. It's beautiful. It's a gorgeous film. Uh, Roger, De uh, Roger Deakins, I think, did the cinematography um, off the top of my head. Yeah, it's just it's such a wonderful film with great performances, great music, um, and it's, I've, it's one of my favorite kind of modern westerns. Uh, so anyway, that's something that I blind bought and have absolutely loved. Um, be really quick here. Uh, now we're going to get to the stupid things. Uh, Chris, uh, you've seen on the channel. Seth, who's also been on the channel a few times, they both recommended Popstar, and I've been a fan of Andy Samberg ever since Alone on the Island and SNL days. Uh, I've never seen this movie. I've heard of it, but I never really didn't see it. And I watched it, and this is hilarious. It's one of the better, like, kind of films that is making fun of other... It's like a spoof movie, but, like, it's making fun of, like, the pop star reality in Hollywood. And it's honestly something that I've loved rewatching. I've seen it twice now, and it's something I'm really excited that I blind bought it, right? Another one is... Uh, a direction where it's like, I really like the director, and so I wanted to get a film 
<clears throat> that I have never seen before from that director to kind of understand the movement of that director and where that trajectory came from. And that's Incendies. Denis Villeneuve, this French-Canadian director, uh, is just one of those directors that have just taken, taken steam since Prisoners and Sicario and Enemy uh, and all the way back to Maelstrom, which I still haven't yet to see. But Incendies is one of those films that it's like it's a, it's a mind twist of a film and it's just something that I've really really enjoyed and I've only seen it twice but like it's one of those films that you can't forget and it's uh, something that I blind bought and I, I really love that. Um, then I have some classic films to show you. Uh, Metropolis, uh, because it's a classic I bought it, right? And then I watched it and I understand why it's a classic. Just kind of like uh, Cool Hand Luke, it's one of those things that is just really legendary. Uh, this is really grandiose. It's got really great production design. It's a really interesting story. So yeah, I just really love this film. I, the camera cut off, so took a water break and here we are. Uh, next few films I'll, I'll mention that I blind bought and you know I'm super thrilled that I bought blind bought it. Decalogue. This television series, this Polish television series near the end of the Cold War um, is just such a deep exploration of human themes. And then the Ten Commandments is kind of what it's loosely based on uh, in this apartment building and something that I've only seen once, but I've, I've rem I remember it. I remember almost every element of each story and I, it's just something that I think is super... Uh, it just speaks to me, right? And it's just something that uh, you definitely don't want to watch this multiple times or even like binge watch this. It's something that like you have to think about and it's something that you, it'll stay with you. And that's something about Decalogue that I find really fascinating and really interesting. And I've mentioned Decalogue multiple times on the channel and I think you should blind buy it too. Um, another one is uh, Rashomon, uh, Kira Kurosawa. This is another kind of film that I bought based on the director, right? I've seen Seven Samurai. And I really enjoyed that film, and I just really wanted to explore more of his films. Rashomon's one of my favorite films by Kurosawa because it is one of those things, just like the Richard Linklater, um, 12 Angry Men, uh, just all these films that really kind of are in like one spot, and it really focuses on dialogue, and it really focuses on uh, the acting. Uh, Harakiri does this as well. It's, it's recounting old events. Uh, to get to a true story and it, it's relying on that and it's relying on tricking the viewer a little bit of like what's reality and what actually is the truth and that is something that I think is really fascinating in film uh, to explore and really play with and I, I think it, the simplicity of the just the set design and like what the act was you know the rape and the murder in particular in this instance is just something that I think is really um, interesting to watch um, different bystanders recollections of what actually happened and I think that's something that cinema does really really well uh, in kind of exploring what is the truth right and then the last thing I'll mention of a blind buy that I bought that uh, I really really enjoyed and I've seen multiple sequential times In the Mood for Love Wong Kar Wai uh, is a Hong Kong film from 1999 or 2000 2000 yeah right I lost my train of thought because my battery died I don't know why but anyway Wong Kar Wai is uh, in the mood for love, I, I've seen this multiple times, and I actually I think I blind bought this because I made a top ten video, uh, a genre series, and I was looking into romance films. So I was looking into When Harry Met Sally, Princess Bride, uh, Blue Valentine, another movie I can mention. I bought blind bought Blue Valentine. What a movie that just hits you in the stomach. Uh, in the mood for love is one of those films that uh, came across uh, my research and really has stuck with me ever since. And it's definitely one of the best. Um, romantic films uh, in the sense that uh, you can't always get what you want kind of way but anyway so those are just some of the films that I have blind bought and um, don't regret blind buying so let me finish the rest of my comment and kind of go on to where I'm, I want to discuss this with you um, but I also love the idea of getting something without knowing what to expect I know this isn't ideal for some due to the expense because Honestly, a lot of these things I do and I buy are expensive, right? Or the lack of knowledge on the subject itself. So a lot of the times I buy things that I have no idea about, right? And I have no idea about the subject matter itself. I just blind buy it. So that idea of 
not idea, uh, understanding the subject is really important to me because I really like the element of the surprise, right? It's like buying a vinyl record back in, in the day where you didn't have ways to listen to the record itself. You would just look at the artwork and be excited to kind of explore that. And that just might be a personality thing with me. Um, also, sometimes I'm in love with a director or an actor or a genre and want to explore it. So I've mentioned multiple times like Kurosawa or Denis Villeneuve. Uh, these are just directors that I've really wanted to explore everything that they have, right? And it's something that I wanted to check, expect their trajectory. And some of these films I'm not in love with. I'm not entirely in love with every Hitchcock film that I have. I have the uh, Alfred Hitchcock collection, I think uh, right behind me right here, the Masterpiece collection. There are several films in there that really don't speak to me and I really don't know if I'll watch it again. But I mean, it's in the collection with The Birds, um, with Rope, uh, just with Psycho, and there's just several films in there that I will rewatch multiple times because I love those films. And I'm, I'm not upset to have them. I, I want to have these films for the future just in case I change my mind because uh, we always are changing, right? Um, and then I also want to add that 99% of the films that I have purchased have never let me down. There really has only been 1% of the films that I've bought that have really kind of bored me or I have not liked. Uh, maybe that percent's changed a little bit, but it's not that much. Um, generally, I am generally, I accept the story for what it is, and I generally try to find something uh, interesting about it. And I know that's not the best economic answer, and it's definitely uh, maybe my own personal preference, but um, it is something to think about. And so I really appreciate that uh, element of it as well. Um, so another element is, do they mean the same thing to me? Do they all mean all these films? And that's, the answer is simply no. Uh, there are certain films uh, like Pan's Labyrinth uh, or A Ghost Story or In Bruges or Lord of the Rings that really mean a lot to me. And I have, I have personal connection with each of those films. But there are certain ones that I have seen once that I'm like, that's a good movie. I'm going to have that movie in my collection. I'm really happy to have that film. And then there are some films that I haven't seen uh, yet, uh, I still have a, a a lot right here that I haven't seen. Uh, Hang 'em High, uh, The Hero with Sam Elliott, uh, The Innocents, the the more recent Innocents, um, Howard's End. There's just a, a lot of films that I haven't seen yet, and yeah, I have blind blind bought them mainly from research, but um, I'm sure I'll find something interesting about each of those films, and I think that's a really interesting point to bring up, though is why do we do this, right? Why does everybody in the community, um, at least when they're making hunting and haul videos, uh, are they just trying to show off? And maybe that is, there is something about that with me that I, I've always been a collector. My dad, uh, this is gonna get a little bit more personal, my dad is a hoarder. Uh, he is a baseball hoarder, so anything and everything baseball, merchandise, uh, memorabilia, baseball bats, baseballs, baseball cards, um, cutouts, uh, programs as well, and just so many different things, except he has a problem with it because he's a hoarder, I'm a collector. I have mine organized, I plan on utilizing each element of my film and uh, watching them and discussing about them as well. But with him, he kind of just buys a lot of things and stuffs it in a corner, right? And I don't want to turn into that. Um, I, know that I notice there's an element of hoarding within myself and uh, he doesn't let go of things because of his uh, upbringing, he grew up fairly poor and so he doesn't let go of things. Um, I'm more apt to let go of things. And honestly, this discussion right here that we're having right now, and also the idea of me going to China, <clears throat> will probably put a different perspective uh, in mind of what actually matters to me. So I might actually, you know, purge several films that I probably won't watch again. Uh, that might actually happen. And I gotta be okay with that. You know, and that's the personality thing with me. Uh, not with everybody, though. And so, um, yeah, so that's something that I think is really interesting as well. But, um, yeah, like I said, all of these movies have different meanings to me, right? They, they can be very, very important or have little significance to me, just uh, historical significance, objective significance, significance to possibly a future family. If I ever have a family, I want them to explore things. And I want them to like what they like, you know? I want it to be like kind of a, like a library, uh, a media library, uh, books and records as well. Um, i just really fascinated by stories, as you can tell. Um... So, so perhaps I have a shallow approach to showing off what I have with the channels sometimes, because lately these videos I've been showcasing, I've been really, really dense, or like very little to no um, density 
into what I've been talking about. I've more or less just like, I'm interested in this film. This is what I picked up, right? I just picked up In the Mood for Love, and I know nothing about it, but I'm really excited to see it. I've been saying that several times, and, uh, you know, it is something that is valid uh, to ask that question. Um, so, I want to see what my subscribers think of these films. I also want to see what I should... So this is more or less kind of what I've been doing with my channel. Me justifying why I do these things. So a lot of these times, uh, these showcases are what has been on my mind, what I've been researching, uh, what subscribers think of sp specific films, and how much they enjoy it and want to share it with me. Um, and also what can open the door for other discussions like this one that we're having right here. And then I pretty much said this is a great idea for a video. Um, and then he responded with thanks for the reply he can understand um, and he's like if I can afford it I can do these kind of things um, but yeah yeah it's just I don't know I thought this was a really interesting comment and I really wanted to explore it and I actually want to hear your thoughts down below what do you think of this entire thing of why people collect why people um, show off their collection their hauls or hunting videos you think there's enough information out there um, to really make it um, meaningful each time to, to share a video. And honestly, I, I want to hear your thoughts. Have you noticed anything different um, from me, myself? Uh, lately, I know I've, like I said, I've, my direction has been altered because I'm going to China. I've had less friends to make videos with and discussions with. Those are the ones that really mean a lot to me. And I've been kind of autopiloting these haul and hunting videos, right? So anyway, I, I really know I'm ranting on a lot, but I wanted to say a special thank you to a lot of different people. So let me get that list real quick. But my first thank you is uh, Young Sun Kim, who made this uh, video possible. And I wanted to say thank you so much for uh, commenting down below on this, on this last haul video I've had. And I really want to thank you so much for kind of illuminating this topic for me. First, I wanted to thank uh, SJS Films. I already mentioned him earlier on in the channel. If you haven't checked out his channel, I'll put all these people that I'm gonna be mentioning down in the description down below. Uh, he's been a long time subscriber of mine. I've failed uh, many times of watching his fil uh, videos because I just haven't had the time to and I, I really need to make more time to watch everyone's videos. And I'll be saying that multiple times as I'm going throughout this list. Um, I mentioned how SJS Films has mentioned Harakiri, and I really appreciate that uh, so much. There's been so many back and forth exchanges that I've I've really appreciated from him. Um, <clears throat> next is Stephanie uh, Movie Chatter. Movie Chatter has been a big time supporter of mine um, for you know about a year ago when we started talking, and we've just helped each other from the Midwest to the East Coast. Uh, I really love our exchanges. We've uh, have really great discussions uh, off. YouTube and on YouTube as well and we keep adding to each other's Amazon lists and I, I thank you so much for that but I also am like we need to stop getting so many things uh, to talk about. Uh, I feel like uh, Movie Chatter talks a lot um, about a lot of really great films and a lot of really great recommendations and so she is wonderful and I, I implore you to uh, check out her if you have not uh, checked out her as, as well. Uh, a long time uh, collaborator uh, in Springfield Hurtastic Reviews, that's Chris Hurtado. Uh, he is a fantastic human being. He's been really, really busy lately, and so we've been trying to get together and making a video soon, but he he's a little bit uh, indisposed sometimes, and so he, he can't make videos. But I want to say thank you. Go check out his uh, channel. He is kind of in a, one of those ruts like myself where he's just kind of putting out some stuff sometimes, but some of it is really meaningful to him, and I think that really shows. Uh, next is a newcomer, um, my friend Chris, who's been uh, on the channel for a while, uh, Chris Bowie, uh, has made a new channel, and follow him on Instagram and YouTube, uh, Filmstocked. Uh, it's one of his friends and him. Uh, they've uh, put out a few videos so far. They're really, really fantastic. Uh, he's just starting out, and so I think uh, it's a really good start. I really like to set up uh, some things I want to mention is uh, get a little closer. Um, yeah, it, and then uh, also, I really like uh, the elements of how quick everything is. I, I feel like I rant a lot because I don't really have much of a script. Uh, and so sometimes I, I really am envious of that, Chris. So film stocks, go check them out. Um, then I also want to mention thank you to Daisuke Beppu. Uh, he shouted me out uh, 
months and months and months ago, I want to say around Christmas time. Daisuke, you put out so much content, it's insane. I feel like I, I cannot consume it. And you know how I mentioned earlier that I really can't keep up with SGS films or uh, movie chatter for that matter. I Daisuke puts out stuff just all the time. And in fact, he's just doing so much for this community. He's doing so much for Criterion. And uh, I really want to say, if you check this video out, Daisuke, I, I hope that uh, you're doing well. And uh, I really want to watch several of your, your videos. But, man, you just churn those out. It's crazy. It's so much, so much stuff. I, I just don't have time for it. Um, but I, I miss you, and I love you, and I hope you're doing well. Um, then I also want to say uh, thank you to Christopher Z. He's been uh, really uh, supportive of me lately. And I really appreciate that. Pravesh, um, Alva, uh, just another person who's been really um, supportive of me. He also <laughs> told me to read War and Peace before I watch it. And uh, I'm really thankful for that. I um, was like, hey, do this before you do this, right? Uh, I need more people to push back on me. And I really, I really like that. I really appreciate that. So that's just a few people. Uh, I know I've missed a lot. And I am sorry if I've missed you. But thank you so much for watching this video. I have several criterions from the Barnes & Noble sale trickling in. I have a, a few things I've been buying here and there, uh, not just the, the one I made uh, last time. But I want to say thank you so much for checking this video out. I know it's longer than usual, but I really wanted to get to the heart of this conversation, and I really wanted to hear from you. So like, comment down below, share this video, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time. I'm not jonesing around.